your banner hanging in the rafters? Or is it something else, something deep within your heart? For much of this season, no one believed the New York Liberty would make it back to the playoffs, except the New York Liberty. And have a little faith in me. Baby, have a little faith in me. And for a brief moment, the mighty Comets had to prove they were still a dynasty with three championships behind them. And the fire inside for another. The two best teams are here again. Game one of the WNBA championship next. because, well, that's what they did last year and won. Yes, even defending champions have superstitions. And Sue Woods put thoughts of retirement aside to prepare as Tari Phillips may have been visualizing the double-double she had the last time these teams met. Welcome, everyone. Michelle Tafoya, Reggie Miller at a very loud Madison Square Garden. There have been the Celtics, Lakers, the Bulls, Jazz, and, yes, even the Pacers and Knicks. And now the Comets and Liberty are giving the WNBA its own playoff tradition. And much like Michael Jordan and Larry Bird and even this guy here, Cynthia Cooper has made the postseason, Reggie, her time to reign supreme. Well, come playoff time, Cynthia Cooper, the great, greatest WNBA star of all time, is shining even brighter and she's getting it done at both ends, taking the ball off the dribble. Now, she might be the greatest pick-and-roll player this league has ever seen. The three-time championship MVP is gunning for her fourth ring in as many years. And her counterpart, Cheryl Swoops, everyone's wondering, how was her health after that 24-hour flu bug in Los Angeles? They're going to need her championship experience if they're going to get over this Liberty team, Michelle. So the obvious question looming out there is how does the New York Liberty beat this very talented Houston team? After beating Cleveland in Game 3 of the Eastern Conference Finals, there was some high-octane celebrating going on here at Madison Square Garden, but it was brief. The goal of winning Game 1 of the championship here at home took priority. New York didn't do it last year, and that's a mistake they want to correct. You want to win this championship against the team as talented and experienced as Houston, you better steal the first one, and we know that, and that's where all our focus is right tonight to win this game. This win, the first game, being at home, is imperative that we win. Um, it will be a difficult task to go into Houston and try to win, too. We want to win this one at home and put pressure on them so we can get to, to Houston and hopefully sneak a win. Kim Hampton and Tamika Whitmore did a solid job for the Liberty last year in the middle, but if the ring is going to come to New York, it's going to fall squarely on the shoulders of Tari Phillips. Her quickness and her athletic ability to take the ball off the dribble against Tiffany Johnson is going to be the X factor for the New York Liberty, as well as defense and Teresa Witherspoon. Holding teams to 38% shooting, under 59 points a game. It's the defense is that are going to win a championship for this Lady Liberty team. And if you think that Houston wants this one any less than the first three, think again. If you think that New York isn't prepared, think again. Both of these teams want the same thing, the WNBA championship. I don't know how sweet it would be to have it, but I can magnify how, how much it hurt not having it, how coming so close and not having it. And the playoffs is a time to play. The playoffs is a time to bring you game. Rest assured that I'm going to come out full force and anything that needs to be done, the things that are not really written down on the stat book, I'm going to be out there doing them. There's so much emotion that uh, surrounds this game that you feel it. All the hard work that we put into this, through all the adverse times that we've gone through, I have to give them everything I have. I have to give them every piece of me. And if that's what it takes, that's what I'll do. It's not about the numbers as much as it's about winning. 
and I want to do whatever it takes to help my team be there. Performing under pressure. You know how to play and where to play and what to do. Let's play hard. Let's play like we have these first four playoff games. If you do, everything will be fine. Stay together, play hard, and don't let nothing bother us. I to win the WNBA championship. It begins tonight right here in Madison Square Garden. We can't ask for anything more, okay? We get out of the box and get this first one, and we put tremendous pressure on them. Tremendous pressure on them. We get this one tonight. In our house, Madison Square Garden, that's where we play great. And we are in the House of the Liberty, Madison Square Garden. The three-time defending champion, Houston Comets, looking to take their first game. Here is the starting lineup. Tina Thompson and Cheryl Swoops at forward. Arcane and Cooper in the backcourt. And Tiffany Johnson at center. For the Liberty, the lineup, the one that has been very successful here in the postseason, Tamika Whitmore and Vicki Johnson at forward. Becky Hammond, Teresa Weatherspoon at guard and Tari Phillips, the league's most improved player, at center. And we take a moment now to check in with the third member of our announced crew, Fran Harris. Fran? Well, Michelle, I think it's deja vu. We were here last year, but Sue Wicks tells me that this outcome will probably be different. When I talked to her this morning, she said the New York Liberty, they're not going to change a whole lot that they've done all season, but that they've got to continue to play that Liberty defense. She said she thinks that they have excelled in their role this year because they've accepted their individual roles. In other words, Michelle, there are no Dianas on this team, only Supreme. Back to you guys. <laughs> well, in the head-to-head -head regular season, they tied at one apiece, each winning at home. They met in Houston for the season opener back in May, and then again here in New York in July, when New York won 69-64. to They're hoping that Madison Square Garden magic will work for themselves again. Tiffany Johnson and Tari Phillips in the circle to jump. And the opening tip winds up in the hands of Cheryl Swoops. You remember last year, Cynthia Cooper as well as Cheryl Swoops got off to a hot start here in the garden. That really paved the way for their third championship. Tiffany Johnson's first shot attempt doesn't go. It remains Houston basketball. It's a theme that's been repeated a lot in the last few days. The New York Liberty must win here at home. They thought how close we were last year. If we had taken care of business here at home, and we had gone on and had Teresa Weatherspoon make the <laughs> shot. The miracle shot. Right. If, if I would have, could have, should have. You have another opportunity this year. You gotta protect home court. Tari Phillips, 0 for 1 now as Swoops pulls down the rebound. That is precisely why the theme for New York has been unfinished business. But the theme for Cynthia Cooper remains the same. Lead the league in scoring in the playoffs. Well, I don't know if that's going to be a game plan for Coach Richie Adubato. I don't know if it was because of transition that Becky Hammond got caught on Cynthia Cooper. But Cynthia Cooper could have 50 tonight if Becky Hammond doesn't step up defensively. Looked like Tiffany Johnson got just enough of a hand on that shot of Whitmore's to keep it out of the basket. Swoops for three. Whitmore, a little lazy going after that rebound, but Weatherspoon ended up with it. Phillips, a tough shot right in the hands of Johnson. Well, the reason why it's a tough shot is because Tina Thompson is going to make Tari Phillips work for everything. There's not one position that Tina Thompson cannot guard, and that includes point guards, Michelle. Cynthia Cooper doing what she does best, just putting it on the floor, driving the lane, and scoring. Well, we all know this is her time of the year. At 37, supposedly the last year for her, she is going to go, wants to go out on a bang. She has maintained that retirement theme, uh, theme and statement yes, all the way. I mean, she hasn't wavered a bit on that. I, I still don't believe it. She's just too good. Too good to hang it up, but that's what everyone said about Michael Jordan as well. He went out on top, and I think Cynthia Cooper, very much the same, wants to do the same thing. Eight seconds on the shot clock as Becky Hammond prepares 
to inbound for New York. A 4-0 Comets lead here early. Setting it up for a Hammond shot. The off balance and rebound winds up for Vicki Johnson. And she is fouled on her way back up. It looked like Houston had that rebound well in hand, but a little bit of a mix-up turned it over to Johnson. Well, I think miscommunication is more than thinking. Tina Thompson and Cheryl Swoops both had their hands on it, but neither one of them grabbed it, and Vicki Johnson ended up getting the loose ball. Vicki Johnson sprained her right ankle in game two of the... Eastern Conference Finals here at Madison Square Garden came back in game three with a vengeance, 14 points and 10 assists. She said she felt that ankle twist a few times, but she had to continue playing on it. She wasn't going to let her team down. I'm told today by the trainer that she's really fine. The soreness has let up quite a bit. Well, she's had a few days to ice it, get some therapy on it. Oh, speaking of ice. Is she energetic or what? And you know what? That's what she wants. She wants this crowd to boo her. She likes to be antagonized. Be the underdog. She plays much better that way. Seven quick points for Cooper as Tari Phillips draws the foul. And it is Tina Thompson who commits the personal. And that was a solid double team right there by Tina Thompson and Jeanette Arcane. I didn't think Tina needed to reach down on there because they had pretty, they had her pretty much caught in the double team. Nice look inside to Phillips for the second bucket of this Liberty performance. Actually, their first two points coming at the strike. They cut the lead now to three. All seven Houston points have come from Cynthia Cooper. And New York goes to that 2-3 zone that was so effective against the Cleveland Rockers. A much better shooting team in these comments. They've got to be a little bit more aware. And that time it is Tina Thompson launching the three. Who do you guard on this team from each team? You got Cynthia Cooper who scored the first seven points. Cheryl Swoops, the Millennium MVP this year. In the third row, you got Tina Thompson. Well, it looks like the Liberty is just going to drive and try to get to the basket and draw fouls. And so far, they've had success. It's now Whitmore at the line. And Tiffany Johnson has her second foul. Well, what a great matchup with Tina Thompson and Tari Phillips, the most improved player against one of the better low post defenders. So where the Liberty have an advantage is that Tamika Whitmore can go to work against Tiffany Johnson, Michelle. That's where they can use some of that bread and butter to get some easy shots. Tammy Jackson now in for Johnson. Again, Johnson's got two fouls, but Tammy Jackson seems to be one who is also a clutch player in the playoffs. So does some of her best work in the postseason. Whitmore makes them both to cut the lead to four. Well, Tammy Jackson is Vance Chancellor's ace in the hole. Whenever uh, Tiffany Johnson, as she does two fouls, gets into foul trouble, you have experience coming off the bench, very much like Sue Wicks for the, for the Liberty. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Tina Thompson, her second three-pointer. She's two for two from behind the arc, and we're not even five minutes into this game. New York moving it around, looking to get it inside. It goes off the foot of Phillips. It's a 13-6 Comets lead. More than half of those points from Cooper. The one thing that, that everyone has to keep in mind is we're here now in the finals. We finally made it here. We're here where we want to be. And if that's not motivation enough to keep yourself motivated for 40 minutes, something's wrong. You need to walk back in the locker room. Well, Fran Harris, does uh, anyone from the New York Liberty need to walk back into the locker room yet? <laughs> I'll tell you what, the, the Liberty wanted to come into this game and establish an inside game, and you've noticed they've taken it to Tari Phillips, and they've only taken one or two perimeter shots. Look for them to keep doing that in the ball game, Michelle. All right, New York, one of five from the floor thus far. Houston, meanwhile, five of eight and three of four from behind the arc. <laughs> Not a full shot clock here, just 15 seconds to begin this sequence. 
I really want, like what Fran said right there because that's the one way they can really hurt this common team if they establish an inside game, get through the get fouls, get to the free throw line, and slow the pace down. If they get an up and down pace with Houston, they can't stay with them. And that last effort to get it inside was fruitless. Swoops now. In and out. Tamika Whitmore with the rebound. And Vicki Johnson looks to Phillips. Takes it herself. Rebound to Phillips. Garbage gets put back for two. And the reason why she got the garbage, Michelle, is because Tina Thompson had to come over and help on Vicki Johnson's drive, which allowed Tari Phillips the easy rebounding position. Thompson again, this time a two. Maybe she should have stepped back and it would have dropped. Whitmore, another rebound. And quickly, Weatherspoon gets it to Johnson. Vicki Johnson finds a lane, kicks out. Whitmore. DJ trying to draw the foul on the putback to no avail. And Arcane now fouled on her way back up for the rebound. So a loose ball foul. Well, right now, New York is doing a good job on the offensive glass. Vicki Johnson with the drive right here. Tina Thompson helps. And there's Tari Phillips with the cleanup. Easy deuce. It's a great way for them to stay in the ball game, Michelle. They trail the by glass. Yeah, they trail by five right now, and that's exactly what Richie Adebayo said. He said we've got to rebound. Thompson again for three off the iron. Swoop underneath Arcane and a quick two. Jeanette Arcane, an Olympian for the Brazilian team, has also been highly effective here in the playoffs. You can't ignore anyone in red. Well, game winner in the Great Western Forum to advance to the NBA Finals against the Sparks. It was her shot that nailed the, nailed the nail in the coffin for them. Two-pointer by Spoon, rebounded by Swoops, who, as you mentioned earlier, had the flu in that game two of the Western Conference Finals. Van told us in not very pretty detail today how <laughs> sick she was prior to the game, but she came out and played. There was a few things coming out of her in the locker room. That's a, that's that's a, that's a good way to put it. it. Hoops three, rebounded by Phillips. Spoon the floor, Jenny. How badly does she want? Of all the people on this Liberty team, yes. she and Wicks, I think, wanted the most. And Vicki Johnson, I think it'd be fair to say. Yeah, they were here from day one. Hammond takes it to the left. What a move by Becky Hammond. But she's been doing that all postseason. You know? Coach Richie Adebato told her she really didn't want her to rely on her outside shot, take the ball off the dribble. And she's been making some unbelievable drives to the hole, Michelle. Cooper runs into a wall, and it's tipped out of bounds by Whitmore. Houston basketball. Becky Hammond was once benched in high school for a fancy behind-the-back pass. Well, she's not getting benched no more because of the behind-the-back passes and the fancy dribbling. Although, ironically, she just took a seat on the bench, <laughs> and Sue Wicks came in, but... It probably won't be for what a steal by Teresa Weatherspoon. Absolutely stripped Arcane, and it pays off on the other end by Vicki Johnson. They wouldn't have a 13-game home winning streak if it wasn't for their defense, and Teresa Weatherspoon has been the main catalyst for that. She leads all women in steals in the postseason. 3.2 a game. And now it's getting very physical underneath that basket. Well, that favors the Liberty. Houston said they don't want to get into a football game. They want to play basketball. I don't think New York would have any trouble putting on helmets right now. <laughs> now just a three-point deficit. Phillips, the turnaround, off the rim. Probably not the wisest shot. Coop brings it back up for Houston. Well, she can make that shot, but that's not her game. Her game is getting down, putting two or three moves on players. This is Swoop's game. That time it didn't go. Spoon has it. An air ball 
by Crystal Robinson. Vicki Johnson on the putback. Off the foot of a Houston player is New York ball. 15-12 game. Teresa Weatherspoon's 3.2 steals a game here in the playoffs leads to stuff like this. Teresa Weatherspoon told us how she sets up her opponents to strip them of the ball. She's coming down, I'm watching, I'm watching, I'm watching. And I'm going to lead her back to that same spot where I want her to be. I'm not going to tell the spot, but the spot that I've picked, that's probably her weakness. I'm going to lead her to that spot, and the moment I get there, I'm going to turn with my teammates and do just like that. It's gone. If I miss it, they got to hit me. But I don't think I miss it. She didn't miss it that time, Reggie. No, she's not missing much in this postseason. Everyone thinks it's, it's her hands, but it's her quick feet. She's always beating the offensive player to the spot, and that's where she uses her strong hands to come up with steals. And that steal is the only turnover in this game so far. A very clean game being played by both teams, at least in terms of ball handling. Well, New York now 4-17 from the floor, but they're only three down. Reason being, they're getting to the foul line as well. Exactly what Richie Adubato wanted his team to do. Prevent the penetration from happening in the first place. That time, they forced the Comets to simply pass around the perimeter. And Arcane passed it right out of bounds. Hey, Spike Lee over there? <laughs> He's throwing it in the spike seats. You know that spot well, dude. Yes, I do. Exactly where it's at, Michelle. Vicky running into a double team. Ten on the shot clock for New York as she continues to handle. Too much dribbling. Phillips now with four on the shot clock. And uh, the second turnover now of the game is one committed by New York. Ten and a half to play first half. Swoops. And now with nine on the shot clock, it's Cooper's opportunity. A couple of quick dribbles and a tremendous shot. She got off to that really quick start. The first seven points of the ball game missed her next couple. But she went back to her bread and butter. One or two dribbles left or right using the glass, the runner. Five point lead for New York, or for Houston rather. And that time Arcane tries to return the favor and strip Spoon. And Jeanette Arcane, a very, very good defensive player, didn't manage to come up with it that time. Tari Phillips, Vicki Johnson to the bench. Becky Hammond and Tamika Whitmore back in. And now Tiffany Johnson will come in for Houston to replace. Well, you're giving up something right here. You're giving you're up right, offense you're right. for defense. You're bringing in, you have Crystal Robinson as well as Becky Hammond in for their offense, but you're going to be giving up a lot defensively because who's going to guard Suits and who's going to guard Cooper? Johnson came out. For Tina Thompson, and now a shot clock violation by New York. Also in for Houston is Coakley's Washington. 35 to play, first half, a five-point lead. 17-12, Houston on top. And for Chris Washington, the lawyer on the team, and Notre Dame, and the point guard duties for Houston. Ah! Tammy Jackson looking to put it back and does. You know, it looks like the Liberty are so conscious of when Cheryl Sweet and Cynthia Cooper drive but they're not blocking out their, their own man. And Tammy Jackson is coming up with easy putbacks. And maybe that is exactly why Richie Adubato just called a 20. To have his team gather itself. They had cut the lead to three, but it's back out to seven now. But if you look at what Richie Adubato is going up against, <laughs> it is playoff power, it is star power. And that somewhat balances out because Cheryl Hoops, who led the, the league in scoring this year at, at close to 21 points, has dipped down to 17.5. And Cynthia Cooper, who only averaged 17 points in the regular season, went up to 22 points. 
All right, now Swoops is scoreless in this game. Coop has nine. Well, she got off to that slow start in game two because of the stomach virus. Cheryl Swoops did, and Cynthia Cooper shouldered most of the scoring load. Crystal Robinson providing a much needed spark off the bench for New York. Crystal Robinson was huge in the playoffs for New York last year. She's a three point shooting threat. The regular season was not typical this year, but she has been doing a lot of little things here in the postseason. Put back by Johnson, the tip in attempt. And now a loose ball foul on Tammy Jackson. That's her first New York basketball. Coach Van Chancellor at one point had his twin towers in there, Tiffany Johnson and Tammy Jackson. Now he's going smaller, bringing back Jeanette Arcane. And you see the NBC games coming up. Game two in Houston. Game three, if necessary. Both of those on NBC this weekend. New York has to win this game. They can't rely on another miracle shot. And a steal right there by Jeanette Arcane. Robinson steals it right back. What an effort by Crystal Robinson. The pass down to Robinson for the payoff. No, but it's out of bounds last touch by Houston. And she can't believe it. A wide open layup. Scoring opportunities are going to be tough enough against a good defensive team like Houston. You've got to make all those chippies, those easy layups. And Crystal Robinson right there is a little miffed that she didn't get that one to go. Last season, she led New York in scoring eight times and had three 20 plus performances. Whitmore now looking. Rolls around and now an offensive foul called. Actually, a loose ball foul called on Sue Wicks. 7.56 to go first half. Comets up by five. Back to Madison Square Garden after this. Another raucous crowd on hand here at Madison Square Garden for game one of the WNBA Championship Finals. And earlier tonight here in front of this very appreciative crowd, the all WNBA teams presented by Bud Light were announced. Anheuser-Busch has contributed $10,000 to each member of the first team and $5,000 to each member of the second team. Here's first team, all WNBA. Swoops, Natalie Williams, Lisa Leslie at center, Cooper and Penichero at guard. And the second team, there was a tie at guard, as you see six players here, Katie Smith, Tina Thompson, Yolanda Griffith at center, Teresa Weatherspoon, and Betty Lennox and Shannon Johnson tied for votes. But here's the big critical <laughs> issue. Tina Thompson not making first team, and Natalie Williams did. In head-to-head -head matchups, Thompson outscored Williams by 11 points, shot better, and rebounded almost as well. It's, now, al it's almost like comparing apples to oranges, though, Michelle. How is Gr that? Well, granted that head-to-head -head meetings, of course, Houston, who is one of the elite teams, probably beat up on the lowly sister Utah, Utah, Utah Stars team. But look how what Natalie Williams did against the rest of the competition. She led the WNBA in double-doubles. I'm sure Tina Thompson's not far behind. I voted for Tina Thompson for the first team. I was a little shocked as you were, but I'm not surprised that Natalie Williams made the first no, team like I'm, you are. Uh, wait, you're putting words in my mouth. I'm not surprised that she made it. <laughs> I'm surprised that she made it in front of Thompson. Now, if you look at all 11 of those players, you can make cases, really, with very few exceptions for all of them. But Tina Thompson, to me, is one of them. She continues to be, I think, underrated and overshadowed by the other two-thirds of the big three. And there was an almost big three for Coop, but that three-point attempt goes in and out. And I think Van Chancellor put it very well to us earlier today yes, when he said, yes, he I had to go to her and say, baby, I've had to come to you for so many reasons. <laughs> there ain't a coach in America who appreciates a player more than I appreciate you, but you are not on the first team all WNBA. That's why she got off the game quick, hitting two long threes. Some Is there anyone better in the open court other than maybe Cheryl Swoops? I don't, I don't think so. I mean, I don't think we see consistently performances from any other player in outside of Swoops. 
we do from Cooper, and particularly, this is the fourth year of the playoffs in every playoff postseason. She, she comes to play. She comes to dominate. Robinson off the mark. Wicks has the rebound. Hannon fouled on her way. Coquise Washington is telling Tina Thompson she needs help right there on that pick and roll. You have to show a little bit more. Make Becky Hammond pick up her dribble or turn her back. She's getting a free reign to go all the way to the basket. Tari Phillips back on the floor for New York. And Tammy Jackson back in for Houston. Becky Hammond at the line. Hammond hitting over 88% from the free throw line, and she plays real well at home. Someone in my own when she goes on the road. She only started half the games of the regular season, but she has been put in that starting lineup and seems to be solidly entrenched there. Nice crossover dribble right there by Coquise Washington. Robinson guarding Cooper. And it's Phillips on Thompson. And Thompson gets by or can't finish the play. Whitmore with the rebound. Tina Thompson can't believe she wasn't fouled. My question is this. Maybe Cheryl Swoops and that stomach virus is still acting up a little bit, Michelle. You haven't seen too much of her struggle from the field at the beginning of the game. Long time on the bench. Indeed. And now a foul is called. Gary Zielinski blowing the whistle. It's Sally Bell, Gary Zielinski, and Dennis DeMaio doing the officiating. And Jeanette Arcane commits her first. 22nd timeout called by Houston. This is a real up and down game for both teams. 16. The lead hasn't got to be much past five here in the last six minutes or so. And we check in now with Fran Harris. When you're looking at Cheryl Swoops on the bench, she is over five. Part of New York's strategy is to contain at least one of the big three. I don't know if Cheryl is still ailing with the stomach flu or if New York has contained her, but she's not in the ball game, and she doesn't look very happy about it. You think that's her choice to be on the bench, Michelle? I, I think you are in the WNBA Finals, going for a fourth win. You are the, I said, the millennium MVP. I think she wants to be out there. Stomach flu and all. 0 for 5 from the floor, as Fran mentioned. Shot clock now as Whitmore goes for the low post. Whitmore has had so many opportunities and just hasn't been able to convert. Still a 5.3. Whitmore just two points, both of them coming from the line. Arcane, jump stop, off the iron, and a foul called. What? And you can hear the protest. Tari Phillips. Tammy Jackson coming over the back right there. Don't you like those low angle microphones? I think they truly enhance the telecast. <laughs> Cheryl swoops back in now. Again, 0 for 5. Liberty has to take advantage of that kind of a slump. Instead, she tries to take advantage of Tari Phillips. Can't do it. Coquise Washington with the save. Accepted again by Vicki Johnson. Foul on Coquise Washington in the backcourt. That's her second. Mad scramble for the ball right here. Aaron pass by Coquise right there. Vicki Johnson comes up with the ball, starts to break. Good foul there. Eliminating the easy deuce for the Liberty by Coquise Washington. Teresa Weatherspoon is now back in, replacing Crystal Robinson. The starters back on the floor.
score for New York. As Phillips tries to work around Tina Thompson, and it just is not happening. Three-second violation called against the Liberty. I think she might have pivoted eight times within <laughs> that three seconds there, too. She was making me dizzy just looking at it, Michelle. <laughs> Five New York turnovers, Houston's got four. And Tina Thompson has that effect when she's a defender. I'm still miffed and shocked that she's not on the Olympic team. She was voted on as a reserve. Unless someone gets injured before they leave, her chances of going are slim. Probably. Last touch by New York, still Houston ball. She is probably the best low post defender in the WNBA. And you're going to need that type of defense when you head on over to Sydney, Australia. And I do think that she remains underrated. And we all include her in the big three, but she's always the third of the three. And that's probably fair, but she's still the third of the three on the three-time defending champions. And now Houston is starting to hit the offensive glass here, coming up with second shots on their own. Still a five-point game and a bit of a scoring drop for both teams. Swoops almost loses it. She's Off pressing a little bit now. Yeah, Phillips with the rebound. Weatherspoon, a little looping pass. Last touch by Houston. And it will be New York basketball when we return. 3.40 to play. The Comets lead by five. New York is still hustling in this one. Houston leads 21 to 16 in game one of this championship series with 340 to go until the half. Hi everybody, I'm Persephone Contos. Coming up on the American General Halftime Report, they've shared our, their lives with us all season long. Coming up at the break, a very special tribute to the women of the WNBA. Plus, Fran, Reggie, and Michelle will break down the first half of this game one of the championship series. That's coming up on the American General Halftime Report. Michelle? All right, Persephone. Well, a little, little while ago, Richie Adubato had a nice casual exchange with Sally Bell, one of the officials. Let's take a listen to what went on, a, a conversation about loose ball fouls. Hey, Sally, do I have a license to go over the back? What's that? If she didn't knock it out, it would have been open. Yeah. So they get the ball back. What? I don't understand. They go over the back, that's a foul, they get the ball back. How does that work? And so you see, things are very amicable here uh, between head coaches and officials. A license to go over the back. Richie Adubato is a classic sort of old school coach. He also had some very interesting things and positive things to say about his opponent tonight. He said about the comments, they're just incredible. With Arcane in the lineup, they're a much better team. They're very difficult to stop. They have no weak links. And he knows what he's up against. No illusions about it. Tina Thompson now with her second foul. New York now in the bonus. Every time there's a dead ball foul or a non-shooting foul, they will shoot two free throws. And they've been hitting Reggie about 77% from the line here in the playoffs. Houston is an incredible free throw shooting team. 87.7 from the line during the playoffs, and they shot about 82% from the line in the regular season. Un unparalleled. Three and a half to play first half. Thompson. Gets an easy two, looks to the official saying, why aren't I also going to the line after that? I was fouled. No call. Phillips now looking to play a little dish to underneath, and instead he gets dish to Arcane, and now Swoops has it. And Swoops loses it, they say, last touch by Tari Phillips. And still Houston ball. And Tari Phillips can't believe her right there. She thought she caused the turnover. And now Cheryl Swoops touched it one more time. Oh, 
Will continues to struggle. Cheryl Sheets does. And once again, and over the back. And Richie Adubato is shaking his head. And that's Vicky, Vicky Johnson's first. We heard the public address announcer say it was her second, but we have her with just one. Houston's doing a great job of attacking the offensive glass. They're getting second and third opportunities. They're getting their hands on loose balls, keeping it alive, giving them more scoring opportunities. Coop working against Johnson and now kicks out to Arcane. She can make that shot, loves the baseline, and shows why. And the reason why it's so effective is, is when Cynthia Cooper drives, two and three defenders are coming over to try and stop her. She has two or three options to hit, and right there, Jeanette Arcane was wide open on the baseline. Arcane averaging about 10 points a game here in the playoffs. New York now trailing by seven. Whitmore, very wide open, and takes advantage of the fact that Tammy Jackson simply wasn't there. That was a good job by Becky Hammond to recognize that Tammy Jackson slipped, fell on the floor, and a wide open Tamika Whit Whitmore. And now Sally Bell blowing the whistle after what appeared to be a very clear foul by Weatherspoon, but she adamantly disagrees. She did all ball. I stopped at the ball. It's okay if I get part of her rotator cuff. It's okay. <laughs> Pass inside to Arcane, and as she tries to dish out, there's another New York foul. And that one on Becky Hammond, her first. But now, Houston getting ready to move into the bonus. Houston has yet to shoot a free throw this half, but at the rate these fouls are going, it won't be long. A rare miss on that shot. Whitmore with the rebound. Weatherspoon all the way to the corner to Hammond. Now Vicki Johnson will have to slow it down. And it's lost. Another New York turnover. Back to Coop. Only has Whitmore in her way. Now swoops through Arcane. And swoops will be the first Comet to go to the strike. And what I like about that, Jeanette Arcane could have took the... She could have took the layup right there, but she saw a trailing. Here's the defensive stop right here first. Great defense by Cheryl Swoops. Classic fast break. Nice bounce pass to Jeanette. And the touch pass to Cheryl Swoops. Jeanette Arcane could have took that layup, but probably understanding that Cheryl Swoops has been struggling. Let's get her off the snide. Let's get her an easy basket. Get her involved. Cheryl Swoops, what a remarkable season she has had improved her game in so many ways. MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, the scoring title. She is on her way to the Olympic Games in Sydney. Still a seven-point ball game. Tari Phillips. And Tari Phillips was critical in the last meeting between these two. She had a double-double, 17 points, 11 boards when they beat Houston here at the Garden. Right now, five rebounds and eight points for Phillips. Houston had a big lead in that game. Up in double digits most of the game. New York clawed their way back in. And on this end, it's Phillips with the foul. Tari Phillips, a rare low post move. Great head, shoulder straight right there, shot right over Tammy Jackson. Now the difference between Tammy Jackson and Tina Thompson, Tina Thompson would have contested that shot with four more. She would have pushed Tari Phillips a couple more feet away from her favorite spot, that low post block for sure. It was not Phillips with the foul. It in fact was Ricky Johnson sending Tina Thompson to the line. And Tina Thompson has been almost flawless from the free throw line. You see there, 93 percent. She's a little hurt. I think she might have pulled. It looks like her groin a little bit or got stepped on. Knee to thigh. She's staying in there. And so is New York. The lead hasn't extended beyond seven. With 
Fowler had a chance to cut it to five, but couldn't. And now just 24 seconds remaining here in this first half. The Comets lead 29-22. Cynthia Cooper, as well as the Comets, will play for the last shot. Can't get it to fall. And a fancy <laughs> attempt at a shot there by Arcane. She went after the loose ball and just heaved it up. Now there are 5.7 seconds left in the half. It's a seven-point lead. A 20-second timeout was called, but we believe there are only full timeouts left. So Sally Bell indicating this will be a full timeout. Seven-point Houston lead. 5.7 on the clock when we return to the Garden after this. If you let down, it's they kill you in little spurts. It's 12-point spurts when you let your guard down or you relax a little bit. And we know that can never happen. In the past, when we've beaten Houston, we've played almost perfect games as far as being intense and playing great defense. So it's going to come from our defense, and it's going to come from um, we help each other and first taking care of your own person that you're guarding and then always being prepared to help. Well, so far, you see the turnovers have changed for New York. First 10 minutes, they had none. Seven in the last almost 10 minutes. Last shot by Weatherspoon, a desperation, and that doesn't fall. But Houston has led by seven, seven different times in this game. But they can't get it beyond that seven-point lead. 29-22. And our friend Harris is standing by with Cynthia Cooper. Fran? All right, thanks, Michelle. Cynthia, New York is known for being an aggressive defensive team. It seems to be very physical out there. It's very physical out there. Um, what we want to do is continue to play the style of basketball we're playing. We're being pretty aggressive ourselves, and we got to stay out of foul trouble and play hard in the second half. Now you're shooting just over 30%. What are you going to have to do differently in the second half to get better looks? We're, we're going to have to shoot better than 30%. I think we're getting better look. I think we're getting good looks. We're just not hitting shots. They're being very aggressive with uh, hitting, the, hitting the ball, hitting our hands, hitting our arms, and so we we just have to be physically tougher. All right, have a great second half. Michelle, back to you guys. So an even physically tougher second half. Stick around. The American General Halftime Report is coming up with Persephone Contos. 29-22 here at the Garden. Welcome to the American General Halftime Report, where Houston has the lead 29-22 at the break in game one of this championship series. Hi everybody, I'm Persephone Contos. Well, throughout this 2000 season, we've witnessed some very exceptional plays and moments on the court. We've also followed many of these athletes off the court, and we've been lucky enough to peek into their lives. Many of them told us that life outside of basketball was ordinary, yet the things they shared with us were anything but. Tonight's game also marks Lifetime Television's last broadcast of the season. Now it's time to reflect, time to recognize these phenomenal women with the help of the extraordinary words of Maya Angelou. Pretty women wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them they think I'm telling lies. I say it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the curl of my lips. I am a woman, phenomenal, phenomenal woman. That's me. I walk into a room just as cool as you please, and to a man, to fellow stand, or fall down on their knees, a hive of honeybees. I say, it's the fire in my eyes and the flash in my teeth. The swing in my waist and the joy in my feet. I'm a woman. Phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me, but they can't touch my inner mystery. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say, it's in the arc of my back, the sun of my smile the right of my breast, 
the grace of my style. I'm a woman phenomenally. Phenomenal woman, that's me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't jump or shout about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it ought to make you proud. I say, it's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair. The palm of my hand, the need for my care. Because I'm a woman, phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's me. Those words were written in 1978, and over 20 years later, they so perfectly describe the women of this league. And to read Phenomenal Woman, the poem, and to also read about the phenomenal women themselves, log on to LifetimeTV.com. When we return, highlights of the first half of Game 1 of this championship series. Welcome back to the American General Halftime Report, where Houston leads game one of the championship series 29 to 22 at the break. Well, we've had plenty of highlights in the first, and for those highlights and the breakdown, we now rejoin Reggie and Michelle. Persephone, thank you, and actually, maybe it's a little bit generous to say we've had a lot of highlights because we've also had some pretty pretty bad lowlights. One of the issues here, Reggie, both of these teams shooting very, very poorly. Houston hasn't been able to extend the lead beyond seven. The only highlight, if you will, has been, of course, Cynthia Cooper. Well, like I said, it's playoff time for her, and she's doing her best to keep her team afloat. She's been going left and right, but she's really been shooting really only runners off that left foot of hers. One dribble left, one dribble right. But it's been going for her. My big question mark is, where is Cheryl Swoops? Is she still really suffering from that 24-hour flu that she had in game two against the L.A. Sparks? Yeah, the Houston uh, locker room just a little bit tight-lipped about that at this point. But meanwhile, Swoops and Thompson have combined to be 3 of 15 from the field. So you see the bad shooting percentages there. It's really not a lot of sloppiness in terms of turnovers, ball handling, that kind of thing. It just seems to be that neither one of these teams wants to put the ball in the basket. Well, I can understand New York. New York doesn't have the scoring that Houston does. But I'm really surprised. Tina Thompson came out, she hit her first two long-range threes, but now she's really been MIA as well, and Cynthia Cooper is doing her best. I want to see the MVP step up. I want to see her take her team to a fourth second of uh, WNB championship. And on the flip side, New York, who, someone has to step up and score. Becky Hammond, where are they going to get the scoring from? Well, Fran Harris, you know Houston very well, having played for that team. Your thoughts so far on what Houston's done and just how this game is unfolding? Well, I tell you, Michelle and Reggie, I really think that Cheryl Swoops is not feeling well because even when she is not involved offensively, she is just a terror on defense. And we haven't seen the blur, I like to call her, the great anticipator on defense that we're accustomed to seeing. If I'm New York, I keep going inside with Tari Phillips and Tamika Whitmore, who really have not done a whole lot in the first half. Houston is really slim at the post position, and if I were their coach, I would certainly keep going at them there. Well, Fran, it's a good point because Swoops does indeed have five rebounds. She has a steal. Those are some of the additional things that she brings to the game. So, obviously, she's not completely... Uh, wow, okay. <laughs> Happy birthday, baby. We just wanted to say that uh, we love you, Reg, and uh, this is only from us, not from just Lifetime WNBA. and that WNBA. And what's up, guys? Yeah. That's what's that. Uh, well, I appreciate it. We thought we were going to hear one good one as you gave him the cake. Come on now, one good one. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Happy wow, birthday. My, hey, you can put my, that right here. Put yes, that right here. We're going to eat all that. We are very me. hungry. <laughs> this game is keeping us busy. Yes, 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 yes. Thanks, guys. Oh, you open up later. You make now. Thank later. you. Later, I'll, I'll open it up later. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm afraid to know guys? what that is. <laughs> I'm afraid to know what that is. The What's Up guys bring you a cake. Oh, wow. I think it's what, your 28th? Uh, my 21st birthday. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Please. No, it's my 35th, Michelle. All right. Thank you, Lifetime and the What's Up. Oh, Fran? Well, I think since it's your 35th birthday, Reggie, that you should have been granted a $35 million contract over three years. And, hey, you got the bonus, and that means my birthday is going to be pretty good in March, right? Hey, drinks are on me tonight. <laughs> Touche. Lifetime, let's go. Touche, Fran. And drinks should have been on him really the entire season. So uh, we're, we're going to make up for it tonight. All right. More of the... That's it for the American General Halftime Report. We'll have second half action when we return to the Garden. And a lot of cake right after this.
back at Madison Square Garden. Game one of the 2000 WNBA Championship Series has Houston up seven points, 29-22 here at the break. Game two you will see on NBC Saturday, 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. And if a game three is necessary, that one will be played Sunday at the same time, 1.30 Eastern on NBC. And in order for that game three to happen, New York has got to steal one. They're the underdogs, that's clear. And if they're going to steal one here at home, it would seem the logical place to do it. Well, if they're going to steal one here, which, you know, you're on your home court, you really shouldn't think about stealing anything. You should go out and actually do it. They do have a 13-game home winning streak here in the Garden. They're going to have to shoot better. And we all know that they've struggled in recent years in playoff games with putting the ball in the basket. They've got to find a primary as well as a secondary score. Becky Hammond was fantastic in that Cleveland series. She has to look for a shot a little bit more. Tari Phillips, who's really been shouldering the load offensively, has to be a little bit more aggressive. And Vicki Johnson, who is leading this team in the postseason in scoring, has to be more aggressive as well, Michelle. Houston's only road losses this season came here at Madison Square Garden, twice at the Los Angeles Forum. Meanwhile, New York riding a 13-game home winning streak. They were 4-2 and two at home versus the West this year. And you had mentioned Houston. Uh, the only two places where they have a losing streak on the road here at Madison Square Garden in the Great Western Forum, the L.A. Sparks. It's not that Houston can't win here, but I think that's why Van got them in early. Get them situated to the city. No stargazing needs to be going on here. It's all about business. We indeed said we're coming in Tuesday because we did that last year and we won. And you don't want to change anything for a coach who's had success with one pattern. It's most likely going to stay the same. And you mentioned they win game one, the miracle shot by Teresa Weatherspoon in game two. They win it all. Facing a seven-point deficit. And Tari Phillips opens up with what could be a very important shot to set the tone here in the second half. Cynthia Cooper possibly seeing the light at the end of the tunnel. And Jeanette Arcane can't get it to fall. Whitmore with a rebound. Good for the Liberty, one shot and done. And there is Phillips again, definitely setting the tone. Four quick points for Tari Phillips to open up the second half. She's got a dozen. Well, she was the only one really offensively that was looking for her shot on a consistent basis. The crowd starting to come just a little bit louder. And now Swoops will quiet them down for the moment. She's got four points. Her first two shots came at the strike. Still a five-point game. Vicki Johnson gets into the paint, kicks back out. Hannon pulls up. Rebound by Tiffany Johnson. Well, at least Becky is looking for her shot. Thompson inside the arc, and that one is a drainer. And Houston Comets starting this second half very much like they started the first half on fire. Everything is dropping for them. And so you cannot let your guard down. And when New York has beaten Houston in the past, it's been done in almost perfect games. Tina Thompson right now. Yeah, poked in the eye. Yeah, she's tending to that eye and moving very slowly back up the floor. Johnson. That one was 
was too easy for Tiffany Johnson. Tamika Whitmore not in position. And that wasn't fair because Tina Thompson stayed in the backcourt and it was four Houston Commons versus five defense of New York Liberty and they still scored. And suddenly the lead is out to nine. Largest Houston lead and the first time they've gotten it to be on seven. <laughs> Tiffany Johnson called for her third. Tina Thompson still tending to that eye. Going up for the rebound right here and Tari Phillips trying to go for the ball right there inadvertently got a thumb and looked like in Tina Thompson's eye. Meanwhile, it's Whitmore at the line shooting 70% here in the postseason. She had 19 points in that game three versus Cleveland in the Eastern Conference Finals. Read all scores in that contest. And this is the second tipped out of bounds by Phillips. It's Houston basketball. Well, let's, let's see if this patent Richie out of bottle trap and generate some turnovers, come up with some steals, very much like in the Cleveland series. And now a foul call as Arcane crashes down to the floor. And it's Tari Phillips, number two on Phillips. That's a good call right there. It's a little bit aggressive. this second half. Houston has extended its lead to nine after New York came out with four quick points. Duke's pass inside, deflected by Whitmore. Here comes Spoon. Into the corner to Vicki Johnson. High Arthur doesn't go. Swoops has it. Swoops quickly up the floor to Thompson. Three-pointer off the iron. Swoops tracks it down. Hoop running into a wall. Now Thompson cuts to the basket. Terrific rebound. Strong pull down by Phillips. And Tina Thompson has to convert on a great pass by Tiffany Johnson. Tina Thompson got to convert on them. Houston shot just 31% in the first half. Hammond, we've seen her make that one a dozen times. Yeah, but not pressing like that. Gonna move the ball a little bit. Just can't come down to launch threes. Hammond guarding Arcane. Quite a height differential there. Coop now inside the swoops. What a nice look. Swoops was all alone as she cut her way to the hoop. Timeout on the floor. Lead is out to 10. No timeout. No timeout. Weatherspoon regrouping for New York. We do not want the double-digit lead to increase for Houston. They can play ball control because the ball's going to be in Cheryl Street, so Cindy Cooper's hand let time off the clock, take you off the dribble and score. Four on the shots off the school launches one, swoops there for the rebound. Bounce pass up the floor, ran into the feet of the defenders. Here comes Hammond. Finds BJ. And New York has not found a way to get the ball inside. The shots from outside if they can get him. Phillips now has 14. Tari Phillips, who is trying to do everything offensively to keep her team in it, is doing a great job against a very good defense of Tina Thompson. Cooper, the three, rebounded by Thompson, a whistle, and this will be a call against Houston. New York basketball, when we come back to the Garden, Comets lead 37-29. But Swoops and Houston still very much dominating. I think this team has been very humble in all three championships. And I don't know, we've seemed to 
conjure up this uh, this hate or this I don't know what it is that that other teams or, or cities or fans have against us for being competitors, and I think that that's probably the the saddest part of it all. I mean, because we have some very nice people on this team, and I think that they kind of take the competitiveness or the basketball personalities when we're competing as the individuals. I'll tell you why everyone is upset. It's because you have three rings, Tina. You call it, it's the case of simple, you have what everybody else wants? Exactly, and you know, a lot of people around here are saying, is it good for the league that Houston's won all the titles? You can't be mad at Houston because they're this good. If you want to take the top dog off, beat them. That'll bring parity in, you gotta beat them. Don't get mad at them, get mad on the court. Tari Phillips has been getting mad. Mr. Robinson is probably mad that that didn't go in, but Tari Phillips, six of 10 from the floor, 60% for Phillips, while the rest of the team is shooting five of 25. Yes, that dynasty question has been posed so many times. And Van Chancellor has said, how in the world could it be bad? You go to Miami and people are wearing Comets jerseys. What's wrong with that? You look at the Yankees, the Packers, the Celtics, the Bulls. Fans love us or hate us, and you need both types to build a league. Swoops at the line. And we were also talking with Coach Van Chancellor, and I, I asked him, you look so animated after that Game 2 victory at the Great Western Forum against L.A. Because everyone pretty much had picked L.A. to beat them because they pretty much handled them during the regular season, sweeping them 3-0. What does Houston do? They sweep L.A. At the most critical time. And it counts. And the lights are on. Shows up. And who's showing up in this second half? Teresa Weatherspoon trying to energize this crowd. Not known for her offense. You see right here the nice hesitation taking Jeanette Arcane off the dribble, using the glass. And what's nice about that, look how low she is right there, protecting the ball. Emotion for the fearless warrior of this New York Liberty team. Shooting about 625 from the line here in the playoffs, about 74% in the regular season. Don't say it, Reg. Don't say I jinxed her. <laughs> she caught the rebound. <laughs> There's going to be a memo out on a lifetime. Anytime we broadcast a game, they're going to put a muzzle every time a, team, a person goes to the free throw line. Ricky Thompson, a much needed crowd energizing two by Vicki Johnson to cut the lead back to five. And the crowd is now starting to get back into this game. This crowd needs to remember it's the last game they're going to see here at the Garden. It's now or never. Boop. Can't finish. Vicky chasing it down. And she decides to slow it up a little bit. Didn't have a lot of help down there. Links now with a chance and rebounded by Jackson. I think she might have been fouled on that. Great interior pass by Teresa Weatherspoon. But someone better pick up Cynthia Cooper. Cynthia Cooper dribbling down unassisted. Two-time MVP of this league, three-time championship MVP. 14 points now for number 14. Huge three-pointer to quiet the crowd. New York's going to have to win them back. And now an offensive foul called. An elbow throw says Gary Zielinski. Tari Phillips moved a little bit on that low screen. She was trying to get Vicki Johnson open. Well, that's the third on Phillips, by the way. 12-15 to go here in the game. Just like that. Lead back up to eight. Weatherspoon hounding Coquise Washington. And they'll say that's off New York. Swoops to bring it in. See Swoop still having that right index finger taped up. She injured that early in the season. Three-pointer, nothing but the net on 
on that shot by Tina Thompson. Largest lead again for the Comets. It's now 11. And Teresa Weatherspoon is showing finally a sign of dismay. Just a glimmer of one, but it was there. Tari Phillips. Tari Phillips trying to keep her team in it. But sometimes it's just not fair. They let you get close. And then they like, just turn it on, like most championship teams do. Thompson again, this time steps inside, passes to Swoops. What a nice look from Tina Thompson to Swoops. And they're sharing the basketball. And that was definitely a concern Coach Van Chancellor had coming into this series. He understood going against Sacramento and L.A. Sparks, they had to play together. They had to share the ball because they were somewhat the underdogs. No offensive foul called there. Instead, a defensive foul called on Coquise Washington. But the lead is out to 11, courtesy Tina Thompson. She is 3 of 5 from behind the arc. Welcome back to Madison Square Garden, where Michelle and Reggie, I talked to Cynthia Cooper last night about her plans to retire, whether she was actually going to follow through on that. She said she was definitely, this was definitely going to be her last season, that she wanted to go out on a high note. But of course, at the end of that conversation, she said, I do have until the beginning of training camp in 2001. So I guess the saga continues. Back to you guys. Oh. Franny, I knew it all along. It's been a conspiracy theory. Everyone thought that she was going to retire, swung song. She is coming. Coming back, there's no way she can retire. All right, you're, you're putting that in stone. You're, you're are you basically, uh, you know? I'm going out on a limb. Going here. Out on a limb I'm and guaranteeing. Oh my All you WNBA gosh. fans, and it's going to hurt the, the rest of the league. But Cynthia Cooper will be back in a Comets jersey at the start of next year's WNBA summer season. Well, in spite of her insistence to the contrary, you heard it here from Reggie Miller. At the care of Lifetime Television, send your cards and letters. <laughs> she will be in uniform. All right. Tari Phillips makes them both. Meanwhile, part of the problem for New York has been their poor shooting from behind the arc. They are 0 of 6. Houston 5 of 13, but there's another promising opportunity. DJ can't capitalize. Jackson has the rebound, and here comes Coakley's Washington. Finally, their, their trap pays dividends for them. They come up with a steal, but they just can't convert. Working against Robinson. Now, Coquise all alone. And Cooper with the rebound. Now, that is an area that Richie Adubata wanted his team to have an advantage. So we've been rebounding well. Okay. Given up, I think, too many offensive boards, particularly here in the second half. Coop is fouled on her way up. Basket doesn't fall, but she will go to the line. Well, Monday night, Lifetime presents the premiere of a Lifetime original movie, Custody of the Heart. Starring Lorraine Bracco, it's an emotional drama of a working mother trying to balance it all until her world starts to crumble. That's this Monday at 9 Eastern, 8 Central on Lifetime. Right now, Houston has the edge in rebounding, 28 to 21. Offensively, they've got 10. New York's got just six on the offensive glass. And there's no way you can keep giving Houston 10 second looks at it. When you have Cheryl Sloop, Cynthia Cooper, and Tina Thompson on the floor. Tari Phillips cleaned up that one. We've got about 10 minutes to go here in game one of the WNBA Championship Series. New York and Houston for the third time in four years needing to decide who will take it all. Robinson taking it all the way Finishes the play and she'll head to the line. Great re weave right there. Crystal Robinson not known for taking the ball off the dribble. Predominantly known as a jump shooter. Doing a good job of using two screens right here. Saw that Tammy Jackson was on her. Just took it all the way to the hole right there. And Tammy Jackson had to follow. Product of South 
of East Oklahoma State, graduated in 96. Playing her second season in the WNBA. And now the foul called on Teresa Weatherspoon, her second. Still, that magic number seven. Houston up by seven. Arcane will direct things to the Comets. Cooper works her way in. A wonderful block shot by Whitmore. And now the foul called against New York. You've got to come up with loose balls when you're going against the three-time champs. You get a block like that, get your hands on it. You, you have a chance to get out there and get a fast break. Great block right there by Crystal Robinson. Tari Phillips there, Tamika Whitmore there. It overcomes late, comes Teresa Weatherspoon. Let's get a loose ball. Instead, it was the third foul call on Weatherspoon, and now that's the MVP shot of Cheryl Swoops. She's got 11 very quietly in this game. She's in double digits. 49-40, Houston on top. Bounce pass inside to Whitmore. Spins in against two defenders. Robinson scoops it up. Now this is where Richie Adderbottle's offense kind of lags right here. They just get hit, caught passing the ball around the perimeter. And Teresa Witherspoon starting to step up offensively here in the second half. Putting consecutive baskets back, back to back for her. Still just four points for Spoon. And it cuts the lead back to seven. up, dribbled in, Phillips going after the rebound, saves it from going out of bounds. Cooper to Robinson, rather Weatherspoon to Robinson was wide open on that look was Crystal Robinson. Thompson inside to Arcane who just cut her way to the basket. So every time there's a little bit of air in the sails of the Liberty. It's taken out by a play like that. Well, on the play previous to that, it looked like Becky Hammond got tangled up with Crystal Robinson before Crystal Robinson took that shot and twisted an ankle. Or I thought he was in there. Cheryl swoops. She is so quick with the basketball. Came up with the steal, brought it all the way up the floor. Foul on Whitmore. A Weatherspoon doing everything she can to keep the Liberty in this game. <laughs> Stefan Marbury with a front row seat at tonight's game here at the Garden. One of many NBAers who makes their way out. There's another one, John Starks, on hand. But earlier tonight, 15-year-old Laura Magnus became the 2.5 million fan of the 2000 WNBA season. And she really appeared to be in shock and said that she was. And she has won a trip for four to the 2001 WL WNBA All-Star Game in July. She'll probably take her father, Bill, and her 16-year-old sister, Vanessa, and her mom, Amy. And she'll probably be seeing Cheryl Swoops at that game. <laughs> Cheryl Swoops has come alive here in the second half. Offensively. Phillips with another rebound. She is single-handedly keeping New York in this game. Nine rebounds to go along with 18 points. Whitmore has been almost a non-factor Phillips now adds two more points. Tari Phillips offensively. Very productive here in the second half. Well, Becky Hammond has gone to the locker room. Let's try to take a look at the injury that happened just moments ago. Well, I think she just got tangled up with Cynthia Cooper. You see her going back right here. She really doesn't see Cooper. Why don't you hold it right there? I'll circle. That's where she almost stepped on Cynthia Cooper's ankle right there. But if you ask Richie Adubato, he thinks Cooper had something to do with the injury, that Cooper might have stepped on her. Listen to his conversation with referee Sally Bell a few minutes ago. 
Hey, Sally. Hey, Sally. Cooper just punched her. No, she right didn't. It was her ankle. Coach, I was bad. Oh, so she did it on her own? No, she did not try it. I saw the blood. She put her ankle. When By she herself? Yeah. By herself. Yeah. Cooper didn't hit her. The mark of a great coach, always protecting your players. I don't know about a punch, but definitely a, a, an entanglement. <laughs> I guess he had to get her attention. Seven on the shot clock. Attention now to the Comets. Two gets the shot off, does Cooper. No good, but a valiant effort as the shot clock was winding down. 52-44. shot though. Right now she has the hot hand, the liberty are feeding off of her. She's got to continue to be aggressive. See Spoon looking for a steal. Thompson. And it's a turnover by Houston. Ball back to New York. Quickly inbounded to Weatherspoon. Doesn't want to waste any time here. essentially a must win for New York. They know they cannot go to Houston and win two in a row. It would take a near miracle. This is the game they have to win. And it's shaping up very much like last year's game. They got down big, always trying to make a comeback, and it's hard to do that when you've got the championship experience that Houston Comets have, Michelle. Crystal Robinson looking to take advantage of that weave play again. That time the ball got stripped, and it's coming back to Houston, but all a foul called on Jeanette Larkane as she knocks Weatherspoon to the floor. That's why, that's why she was the two-time defensive player of the year. Look how she is moving her feet right here. Stride for stride for Jeanette. Gets her whole total body, sacrificing her body. Legitimate call then, not, not acting there by Spoon. A little bit of acting, but okay. I like how she did that in front of John Starks. John Starks is great. <laughs> We're drawing offensive fouls exactly like that. Maybe she took a page from John Stark's book. Now they turn it right back over to Houston. Just over five minutes to play here in game one at the Garden. Last game of the 2000 season here in New York. Loose ball chased down by Coop, and she has it. Eight point common lead. has the rebound. She has been high. again and again, 11 now for Phillips. In New York, they've had their chances to get in this ball game. It's the fourth time straight they have stopped Houston and they can't score at the other end. Sorry, Phillips, bounce pass into Whitmer. And the roll does not happen, but she will go to the line. Let's check in now on the status of Becky Hammond. Fran? Well, guys, a couple of plays ago, Becky Hammond twisted her left ankle. She went to the training room, and they found that she does have a mild left ankle sprain. They taped it up. She's back on the bench, and she is available. Well, that would be a big loss if she can't return to this game. Saw her averages right there, 12 for the season, 11 in the playoffs, but only four tonight. Well, Houston is a well-prepared team in addition to being very talented. They know where the shots are coming from from their opponents. They know who can get hot and how to take it away, more importantly. Ah! Whitmore makes them both, cuts the lead to six. Full court press. Trouble breaking it by Houston. Phillips comes up for the steal, just jumped up in front of Coop's pass and stole it. And this would be huge if they can convert right here. Tamika Wimmer hasn't gotten a single roll, but Tari Phillips puts it back with style. Tari Phillips, 22 points, 12 rebounds. And this is very much shaping up to like 
to the last regular season game here between these two teams. Houston got off to that big lead. New York chased them down, fought back, fought back, and ended up with the 69-64. And right there, another offensive foul by Cheryl Swoops. Teresa Weatherspoon sacrificing her body. And a timeout on the floor. The lead is down to four. 52-48 when we come back to the Garden. I have snapshots in my head of Spoon sobbing in the corner. And I don't think everyone watches the cameras, you know, the person that wins. And you always want to be that person because the other side of that picture is not very nice, even though you can look back and say, I made it to the championship, I was one of the best. But when you get that high and you fall and you come short, it's very painful. So we have all that and we do not want to experience that again. Well, Tari Phillips is trying as hard as anyone to prevent the Liberty from feeling that pain again. 22 points, 12 rebounds. Let's not forget that she was an ABL All-Star, the MVP of the 1997 ABL All-Star game. Played in two NCAA championship games with Georgia. Tari Phillips is a talent. She is definitely accustomed to championship play. They're going to her. of Phillips and Crystal just bulleted the basketball right toward Phillips and it just slipped to her hands. Yeah, that was a little bit too much mustard on that pass. It was a little too hard. Fran Harris has picked up on some New York strategy for us. Fran, what do you know? Well, if you notice, the tide of this game changed, Michelle, when New York went to that zone press. They want to exploit the fact that Houston does not have a true point guard on the floor in Jeanette Arcane, and they feel like they go a little bit deeper on their bench, so they want to try to wear Houston down. Back to you guys. Is that something that can work, Rich? Well, I don't know if that's going to work, but in, in championship play, you try and use everything to your advantage, and that's exactly what they're trying to do. Houston is a difficult team to wear down. Especially when you've got three scores on the floor at all times, and you never know when Jeanette Arcane is going to explode for you. So really, you, know, you have four scores out there at all times. It's tough to shut all four down. They've been successful at stripping them from time to time, and now a loose ball foul called against Houston. Teresa Witherspoon trying to will this crowd, get them in the ball game. But the way they're going to get in the ball games is, is by making baskets. They got to put the ball in the hole. That'll get this crowd into it. Cynthia Cooper called for her first. She became the first player in WNBA history to surpass the 2,000 point plateau. She's really been the first to do almost everything. and tips it back outside. And now Crystal Robinson will try to get something going. Whitmore cannot hit the side of a barn. Opportunities after opportunities for the Liberty. They cannot break that four-point cushion. And now Crystal Robinson is limping off. It looked like a twisted ankle. Uh, let's take a listen to the last New York huddle and what Richie Adubato said to his team. Look, we're right here. These guys right. dig in. We got it right now. We're right there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Four points. Right. Yeah. You just got to play, play hard-nosed defense. You got to get up on the glass. You got to get up. Everybody's got to rebound. You got to bring it down and execute. And we'll be fine. Right? He wants that rebounding. He wants the defense to prevent Houston from penetrating. And he said to us earlier today, Reg, we've got to try and stop the pick and roll. That's something very difficult to stop where Houston's concerned. Well, and also, when you're speaking about pick and roll, as I mentioned at the top of the show, Cynthia Cooper is probably one of the best in the pick and roll situation. If the game is going to get on the line, they're going to play slow down ball. And the ball, slow down, a slow down game, and the ball is going to be in Cynthia Cooper's hands. And that favors the comments. Just over two minutes remaining, a sellout crowd of over 19,500 here at the Garden. Lead 
misses four for Houston. Truth to faith. Robinson the rebound. She listened to Coach Adebato. Pass into Phillips. Blocked by Tammy Jackson. And now a fight for the basketball. And what are they going to call? It got awfully tangled and crystal down there. Tari Phillips and Tina Thompson both on the ground. And look at this two-handed block right here by Tammy Jackson. <laughs> Tina Thompson falling on the floor, and Tammy Jackson getting all ball right there. Big block. This is a big jump ball. Really for both teams, and more so the Liberty. Becky Hammond back in. A minute and a half on the clock. We are on the Liberty's end of the floor. Tari Phillips gets up there, but dumps it right to Coop, and now they say it's Liberty basketball. Violation on Cynthia Cooper moving before one of the two participants touched the basketball. She can't believe it. They never can. Timeout now by Becky Hammond. It's a 20. And you see Adubato trying to calm his team down because they've got more basketball to play, and you're going to see it starting tomorrow, 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. That game live from Houston on NBC, and if necessary, same time on Sunday for game three. All right. Reds, Liberty down four, 131 to play. What is the best bet for Becky Hammond's team right now? Well, at first, you can't panic. And Tari Phillips has been carrying them all game offensively. She's been getting any shot she wanted against a very tough defensive minded Tina Thompson. If I'm them, I'd run a pick and roll with either Teresa Weatherspoon or Vicki Johnson and see if they can get Tari Phillips loose on the roll cut. to be ice cold. One sixteen to go here at Madison Square Garden. And they're getting it done on the defensive end all game. Sorry, Phillips. And now Coop going against, against Vicki Johnson. Takes the three-pointer. Phillips is there again. Who else? 13 rebounds. And now a foul called on Cheryl Swoop. She just glares at Gary Zielinski. Nice little <laughs> acting job right there by Teresa Weatherspoon and Cheryl Swoops. Nice little smile there for the official. I'm not sure it was a friendly smile. <laughs> 